What's up guys, welcome back, and today we're going to be making a keylogging Chrome extension. Now this tutorial is targeted towards the complete beginner plus a few things, and it's going to teach you the basics of making Chrome extensions, including content scripts, background scripts, and Chrome message passing. Now also in this video I show you how to make a full featured LAMP stack using Raspberry Pi that will save the keystrokes from your Chrome extension in a server backend. So enough intro, let's get right into it. Okay, let's get started here. Let's go over to evansawyer.com. Hit the downloads button and you will find a folder called templates. Look for keylogger and download keylogger.zip. Go ahead and extract keylogger.zip into a folder. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the project in VS Code and let's take a look at what we got here. So we got two JavaScript files, an icon file and a manifest file. Uh, let's take a look at the manifest file real quick and uh, here you can basically just customize a few things about your extension just like the title the description its permissions and related scripts etc now i'd recommend leaving most of this alone obviously change your title and such but for the most part i figured out what works for you we also have a blank icon file so it doesn't show up in the top corner of the browser and let's let's just go ahead and take a look at these javascript files so we need our extension to collect user keystrokes and send them to a remote server to be recorded. Um, so to do this we need two different JavaScript files. One, content.js is going to be injected into the page that the user is on to actually pick up the keystrokes. And background.js is going to stay in the extension and send those keystrokes to the remote server to be recorded. Now, the reason we need two files is because content.js being in a web page can't actually make requests on behalf of that web page to other servers, so we have to actually pass it back to our extension itself. So to do that, we need to use something called Chrome message passing. You know, in the spirit of uh, building this from scratch, I'm going to research it myself and add in code snippets that I find. Okay, so to receive a message in background.js, we're going to paste in this bit of code, and then we're going to make a handler function to process the data. In content.js, this bit of code will send a JSON object to the handler function in background.js. That's pretty much all there is to it. Now let's go ahead and start grabbing user keystrokes. Use window.onkeydown to grab all keystrokes on the active window. And let's go ahead and plug in uh, an event parameter to grab the keystrokes via event.key. Now I'm thinking we should do a quick test. Let's alert those characters to the screen just so we can see what's happening. As always, go ahead and save all. And I'm going to show you how to load your extension into Chrome. Go to Chrome colon slash slash extensions, hit developer options, and hit load unpacked extension. Uh, find your project folder and select it. So now your extension is in there. You can see the title and the description and the icon. And let's go ahead and test it on this page we have open. Awesome. As we can see here, uh, it is showing every key that I press, including enter keys, back keys, and uh, other special keys. Now, uh, unlike normal keys, we kind of want to separate uh, those, those special keys from the rest of the text. So for anything that's longer than just like a single character, we're going to go ahead and surround it in quotes using this uh, if statement here. Uh, so as you can see here, we're passing our keys to a variable k. Uh, if the keys are longer than one character, we're going to add parentheses around them. Um, now at the bottom, we're going to go ahead and add k into a new JSON object called data, which we're going to pass into the Chrome messaging function. Uh, now in this JSON object, we're going to do a key and a value pair, which I'll explain a little bit later when we go ahead and retrieve these values. But go ahead and just copy what you see on your screen right now. And let's go ahead and plug in data as the JSON object in our message passing function. So the values in data that we pass to background.js can be retrieved by the name of the key. Uh, as you can see there, uh, for example, key would be page or key would be key. And we can retrieve that by doing request dot and then the name of the key. So request.page for the name of the web page and request.key for the name of the key. If you're having trouble understanding that, just understand that doing request.page maps directly to window.location.href and request.key maps directly to our variable k. 
Now to further demonstrate that, I'm gonna go ahead and alert these values from background.js. So you can also see kind of the difference between content.js and background.js. So as you can see here, the name of the site that's giving us the notification is the name of the page that I'm currently on. That is content.js. Now if I go ahead and refresh and reload the extension, I'll uh, pick up the new code and now you can see the alert is coming from the extension itself Remember, we named it not a virus so that is background.js and it does show us the key that we pressed and the page that we are on so now we're ready to send these values to our remote server so to do that we're gonna be using the XML HTTP request object uh, personally one of my favorite JavaScript objects because it allows you to make HTTP requests using JavaScript which is awesome and we're going to be using this to post uh, the values to our remote server. So let's open it as a post request, as in we're sending the data behind the scenes. And uh, a lot of the stuff we'll, we'll fill out once we have a server to send it to. Something else we're going to add here is the onload function. Uh, that defines a bit of code that's going to run when the server gives us a response and we're just going to have it alert that response text to the screen. Now for the data that we're going to send, we're going to lay out our values into a string that's going to get passed to the send method. So we're basically just going to define the values key and page by plugging in references from our request object accordingly. So the only thing we're missing now is a server to send the data to, which is going to go right in that little blank there. So I'm going to show you how to set up a basic server and make a simple PHP script to receive the keystrokes and write them to a log file. Now I'm using a Raspberry Pi to do this, but you can use Ubuntu or any other Debian Linux as well. Once you're logged in, go ahead and update and install Apache 2 and PHP. After the installs are finished, let's go ahead and set up Apache to run on startup, and let's just go ahead and make sure that it's running. Now we can go to the web root directory and start writing some PHP. Let's go ahead and make a keylogger folder for our project and a new file called index.php. So the first thing we want to do here is make sure that it is actually our extension running the script and not just somebody who entered the address in their web browser. So we're going to do that by making sure that post key has a value, uh, which would be sent from our background.js. If not, we're just going to return access denied and then we're going to exit the script so nothing else happens. So if everything is good, we're going to go ahead and open our log file. I'm going to call it key.log, and we're going to append characters to the file. Uh, we do that using fwrite, and we can plug post key directly into fwrite. Always make sure to close your file when you're done with it. It's good just to you know clear out space that you're not using. Um, now we do have a problem here though, because we need to make sure that when we change pages, it keeps track of uh, the change in pages and it also doesn't report the page that we're on multiple times. So to do that, we're gonna actually keep track uh, of the user via a session variable. Now a session variable is going to put a cookie on their browser uh, that basically holds data on the server for them. In this case, we're gonna be storing what page they're on and if it changes, we're gonna store that change in the log file. So to do that, uh, let's just go ahead and add a part of the code where we store the page and if the page changes, or in this case, if the page hasn't been set yet, let's go ahead and write down what page we're on. Now, to assign that to session, we're going to go ahead and set session page equal to post page to keep it updated whenever it changes. Um, now, we're also going to change when session page is not equal to post page because that would indicate that we have changed pages. So like I said, in background.js, we are going to alert the response text. So let's go ahead and add in some response text. Also notice I made a mistake here. Go ahead and fix that semicolon. 
And since we're trying to write files, we need to reassign the ownership of the web root directory to www.data. Before we go on, let's go ahead and just delete those alert boxes. So let's go ahead and test our PHP script. Go ahead and enter the address of your server and the keylogger directory. Now, as you can see here, since we didn't have any post data, it kicked us out, it gave us access denied. But if we copy and paste this address into our extension with the proper post data, the PHP script should write characters into our log file. Now let's go ahead and update our extensions and give it a quick test run. So when I press a key, the key gets sent to the server and the server responds with the output that we programmed here. So now that we know that it works, we can go ahead and get rid of the output. And as you probably guessed, if you go to keylogger slash key.log, the backend successfully wrote the page that I was on and the key that I pressed. And as you can see, it's actively picking up all the keystrokes that I'm typing right now, even though this is just a blank page. And if we go to another page, it picks up all the text that I enter into a text box. Notice how when we went to a different page, the backend picked up on it and reported the new page that we went to. If you want to reset the log file, go ahead and delete it from the server and a new one will be made the next time a new key is pressed. And of course, if I were to be typing my credentials in somewhere, you can grab username and password with it. Now I say this is for educational purposes only, but if you wanna go and mess with your friends with this, uh, it's super easy, just throw it on a flash drive, plug it into their computer, load it through Chrome, and you're pretty much good to go. However, if you're just using your laptop as a server, unless you wanna do port forwarding or something, you do have to be on the same network as your victim. Alright guys, that about wraps us up for this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something, or I hope I helped you out with a project you're working on at the moment. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and follow my Instagram and my TikTok at diverge.yt, and uh, stay tuned for new projects and new videos. See you next time.